All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we're a little bit late today. Technical difficulties. Anyhow, here we are, and we're going to go ahead and check out tubular locks. So, um, the tubular locks, like this here, <clears throat> okay, this is what one of the keys look like. Um, I've been a real big fan of the HPC tubular lock pick, and that has been my go-to and favorite. South Lord actually sent me this one out, and this is the South Lord TPXA-7. This thing has been working extremely well as well. And you can just feel the difference in the tools by the weight and just how they're put together. This is a precision built machine. I've had exactly as much success with this as I have had with the HPC machine. So both of them work. If you can find one or the other, uh, that's up to you. But let's get started in making a key for a tubular lock. All righty. Nothing on the Liberty Safe debacle. Seems to me that MCRs can be reset. Yes, I did actually do a video on uh, the Liberty Safe debacle. So just search my name, do Wayne Winton and uh, Liberty Safe or FBI or whatever. Or just check out the YouTube channel. I did address that. Uh, it's not just a Liberty Safe issue. It's every safe manufacturer. Um, all of Almost all of the locks. I don't want to use the word all. I want to use the word almost. Almost all of the electronic locks have a backdoor or an MCR or a super code or a super master code built into them. So I'm not going to focus on that today because that's not the, the uh, main thing for today, but um, just to let you know. So let's go ahead and uh, watch this video on making a key, picking and decoding a tubular padlock. Alrighty guys, we're going to be doing a tubular lock pick and key generation demonstration using this American. Hopefully everybody has sound from the video. Padlock. Okay. So, A, make sure you have some blanks. So somebody asked about the cheapo uh, tubular lock picks and yes, they do work. Um, I got a set whatever the set on Amazon is, it comes with three or four different ones. They're not as precision built and they, I keep them in my lockout bag just in case something breaks on my good ones. Um, the feeler gauges and stuff like that, you can have a problem with them, but it's not, um, it's not, it's, they're not great. They, they will work. I would highly recommend that you invest in a quality tool. The HPC and the South Lord are amazing. I really, really enjoy those. The other ones it can be done with, but it would be like getting a knockoff leashy tool. It's probably not going to be made as well, not high, as high quality, therefore not as effective, therefore not as profitable, slower to operate, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to need blanks. These are 1137B. From Ilco. Come in. B focus. Put the key blank in the chat description box. Whatever blanks you like, I don't care. Uh, you're going to need the HPC TPLC Model B. This is the go to. This sucker picks. Just about everything. And yes, if used properly and practiced enough, it will pick the um, ACE2 picks or ACE2 locks. <clears throat> so that's what we've got. I'm taking pictures too. So we can, if you guys want this in a downloadable PDF, email me, tricountylocksmithservice at gmail.com. I will send you the pictures in a downloadable PDF. Okay. Also, if you want to watch the video, it will be at wayneslockshop.com. So you're going to tension this. You'll have to play with the tension. You have to play with the pick. You have to use it to be able to get what you like. So I like to kind of loosen them up and then flatten everything out and then just give it just till it starts to feel a little tight. Okay. To reset it. This is really the key is understanding that 
the lock is going to pick differently depending on that tension that you set there. Okay, let me see if I can make that a little bigger. There we go. Uh, depending on what you set, okay? <clears throat> and if you set it too tight, I like to set it kind of loose, first of all, because it'll help it fly open faster. The lighter tension that you set on it, the more it's going to allow those pins to move. And basically what's happening is you're going to bind a pin, just like lock picking or impressioning. And as you move or rotate the lock pick around, since those individual little probes can move, when it hits a bind, it's going to lock tight against that pin and it's going to move the feeler up. Okay. In that case, until it hits the shear line and then it's not going to move anymore because it's not binding anymore. You keep doing that as you're operating the pick and that's what makes it fly open. Uh, ACE 2s, I have opened ACE 2s with them. The difference between ACE 2s and the ACE conventional picks are spool and security pins. So it will take more finesse. Okay. A lot of times on the ACE 2 picks, you'll have to physically manipulate each one of those feeler gauges or each one of those probes in order to get it picked. ACE 2, much more difficult to pick, but not. Um, not impossible. So hopefully that answers that question. You just push like so. Okay. Click. That's what resets it just like that. Okay. And you push the washer down. It pushes all the little feeler gauges down. And that's what it'll look like. Okay. Come on camera. Anyways. Now, you're going to be taking this side right here. It has no feeler gauge on it, and that's where that's going to go in the slot. Okay? Just like so. Ta -da. Okay? Then... You're going to insert, okay, push it in, and you'll start to feel it. Oops, I loosen that up way too much. This is also part of my process. So I'm already planning that I may not pick that lock the first time that we try. If we come back out and I spend a lot of time doing the picking and shaking and moving and binding, and it does not work, and I feel like it's been a significant amount of time or a sufficient amount of time, I will pull the pick back out, reset and tighten that ring down. That's why you got to have one way to move or the other, either tighten it down and start loosening it up or leave it loose and then start tightening it up. I kind of like to leave it loose because it's going to, if the lock is sloppy, it's going to pick it faster. Okay. Push that in there. There we go. And I'm just going to rotate and give a little turning jiggle like so. And I'm going to come back. Little turning jiggle. It's almost like impressioning. Okay. Little turning jiggle after you bind it. So you're going to just bind and give a turning jiggle. Okay. Turning jiggle. When I say turn and jiggle, I mean, physically inserting it in the lock, turn it, feel that bind, and there's several different motions that I do. One is kind of like this, kind of like a oscillating motion. The other is more like an impressioning or kind of a vibrating motion. Okay, kind of turn and bind and kind of turn and bind. But the point is, is you want to, you need movement in this pick in a round kind of motion like this so that the binding pin pushes up on one of the feelers or on one of the probes so that it moves it. You have to have movement in order to move the feeler gauges or the little feelers or probes to move them to their correct location. Release, bind, turning jiggle. Release, bind, turning jiggle. Release, bind, turning jiggle. And then you'll get a feel for it. And you do it over and over and over, and eventually the 
pins will go where they need to go and you'll have lock picked. If you do it for a while, you don't get anything, you may need to reset it. Okay, click. Did you see that? Click. That's it. The lock is now picked. This one went pretty quick, but once you do these fairly often, that's actually about the normal amount of time that it takes me to pick the average tubular lock. Um, you'll also see them on, oh, like fire or uh, these little instant gun safe boxes like this. That's usually gonna be the override code or the override on these. Uh, very common safes, firefighter safes. The problem with firefighter safes and here's, this is actually a really good point. When you do firefighter safes, the, the lock is located too far into the hole and for your HPC or your South Lord pick to work. So that's where you have to use one of those Amazon or, or cheaper, you know, kind of Chinese made picks. And because all of the collar and the tension ring and all that, it uses bands. It uses rubber bands instead of uh, actual tension, a uh, metal tension ring. So it'll fit further down into the hole. So that's where those come in really handy. So it is a good idea to have multiple lock picks. Okay. You now have the key code. Do not touch anything. Do not reset. I like to immediately come in and tighten the tension wrench right here or the tightening screw. I don't know what they call it, but anyways, right there. Tighten that clutch. We'll call it a clutch, okay? Because it, it, it clutches how much pressure these things have. So you don't lose the key. Then we take this guy here. Okay, ta-da. And this has all the numbers on it. So we will now go, you'll look at your key blank, okay? And we'll hold it like so. And we'll now decode the lock. Put this on here and you read it, okay? Four, three, two, this one says five, okay? So I'm just gonna decode this. I'll come back and take pictures. Uh, your tool will come with a decoder as well. So for the, uh, for the HP, or I'm sorry, for the South Florida, it's gonna look like this. Here's here in a minute. Five, and then you write it down. Five, okay? And then we go around. So make sure which way you go around, clockwise, counterclockwise, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Three. Two. Seven. One. Five. And you can see how I'm holding this here to where it's completely flat all the way across the top. And this is uber, uber important. Okay. All the way across the top. All the way across the top, like so. So that way that prevents you from moving it and distorting the key code. All right. So you need to have this. It's designed to be specifically long enough to where you can lay it flat across there like that. Now we have the key decoded. Okay. Keep that there just in case you need it again. At this point, we'll be using the HPC. 
cutter, hand cutter. So you can take that and this and key blanks in your pocket and you can go to the lock and you can open it up and then you can make keys for it right then and there. Uh, if you've got to make a lot of keys, it's kind of a pain. But anyways, if you need to adjust this, I suggest you make sure that everything's calibrated first. But if you need to calibrate it, you can adjust it right here if it's cutting off. Okay. And you can tell if it's cutting off because you can cut your key and then you can use your decoder to measure the cut to make sure that the key is working properly. So, okay, when it's in this position right here, all the way up and the arrow pointing down like so. This is your starting position, okay? This is the arrow indicator of where you're actually going to be. Okay, right there. Your key blank in the same position, in the same way, the same rotation that you took the key. See how we're starting here with the key and the nub right there? That's going to go directly off to the side. Okay, so you're going to be reading your key the same way you're reading your pick. So you put it in there directly. And we're going to go this way. So that way, when I look at this, I'm looking at the pick and I'm looking to see if those deep cuts measure up. Five, three, two, seven, five, one, five. Five, three, two, seven, five, one, five. I can look at that and see what we got going on. Okay. So that is your position right there. Hopefully it has that. And you can see that. Cha-ching. Okay. Now, this is your cutter. It looks like it's a cutter. It looks like it could cut things. All right, so our first cut is a five, okay? So we're at zero, where the indicator is, and I'm going to go in this direction, which would be counterclockwise, okay? When I'm looking at it counterclockwise, I'm looking at it directly like so, and I'm gonna go to the number five, okay? You can see roughly how much space is in between there for a number five cut. Okay, if it doesn't look like that, you have problems. Okay, this is then going to go into here and it's gonna trap the key, like so. There's two holes, there's two holes. There's a post and another post, a long post and a short post. They only go one way, okay? only go one way and that's going to lock the wheel the depth wheel from turning now I can no longer turn this okay so I can't lose position on it that thread depth then stops this the way this works is this cutter goes into here it slides up through the hole and it cuts the key this is your measuring factor based off of rotation and depth this, you can see, rubs right onto here. Where it rubs on there, that's how it stops it, okay? This stops right there. That's how this system works. So you can see the cutter come up. There should be no space. You're putting pressure down, holding the key in place, like so. Okay, you have to hold the key down. So that's why there's this little finger groove here. So you can grab it like so, and then you're twisting this way. Think of it like grinding a pepper grinder. It cuts, you can go back and forth, but you need to go until there is no more room in here. There is absolutely no more room, okay? 
So I'll show you what that looks like before we start. I'll show you on a more dramatic one here. So my five is now cut. We now undo, undo, pick up. That's your cut. You can see the cut now. Okay. Cha-ching. Cut. So I'm going to be rotating in the same direction. If you need to look at your key or you need to look at your pick, go ahead. The next one I've got is a three. That looks like a three. If we were going the wrong direction, that pin is all the way down. That's a one. We know it's not a one. We know it's a three. <clears throat> so I'm holding this in the same direction, looking at it this way, turning everything in the same direction. That's how you can get really, really confused with this. So now I'm on the next one. Okay. I'm going to turn this back to zero, like so. And I'm again going to go counterclockwise until I reach the number three. Once I reach the number three, I'm going to trap the wheel. And lock it in. It needs to be flat. If it's not flat, you're not doing it right. If there's any gap in between the key and the base of the cutter, you are doing this incorrectly. Number is lined up. The wheel is locked in place. We insert the cutter. And I'll show you on the seven what it looks like. Okay? So we cut it, cut it, cut it until it's flush. A, you'll feel it stop cutting. You can feel a little grinding. When you feel the grinding stop, it's done. And when you see that there is no longer any space in there, that's it. It's all done. Okay, that's your cut. Three. Two. So I like to go all the way back to zero. Back to zero and then go because if you just go from here and you turn it too far you're gonna you're not even gonna be cutting anything anymore so reset the tool back to zero and then go from there so we reset the tool back to zero and we're gonna set it on two lock it in lock the key in and we are now on number two, cutting depth. Okay, cut until it's all done. Make sure that it's flat, can't feel any more grinding. That's your first indication. And then visual indicator that it's now cutting or it's now flush with this. It's stopped cutting. Okay, big number seven cut. Now I'm gonna look at my key. We'll be going from a two to a seven. Be looking at my pick. The biggest cut of all, yes, two, seven, two, seven, all in the same direction, okay? That's gonna go just like so. Reset my machine back to zero, back to zero, and then over to seven. First one, lock it in, okay? Always, always, always lock it in. Lock it in. Now look at the gap. Can you see the gap? You see the gap and the distance in between here and here. In between here and here. Okay? Right there. That distance and that gap will be gone when we're done. That's how deep a number seven cut is. Okay? So we're going to grindy, grindy, grindy until that's all gone. Okay, make sure that it's flush. And 
and okay now look at it no gap so that will be the difference that will be your indication you can get some light in there no gap okay absolutely no gap in between the cutting plate and the depth plate you'll have to ask hpc what the uh exact dimensions of that are but anyways okay and look at it look at that cut that's what it's going to look like okay Just like so. Okay. Now that's done. And our next cut's going to be a uh, five. Pick the key up, turn it, reset my machine, and then go to a five. Okay. There's your five. Just like so. There you go. That's how much it's going to cut for a five. That's what a five depth is going to look like. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. And grindy, grindy, grindy. Just like a salt and pepper shaper. Okay. But it's mobile. It's nice. You don't need any power. Okay. Ah. And that's what it's going to look like. Yeah. Pop that off. Rotate our key again. Same direction. Take a look at the key. Take a look at your pick. Okay. I've got a number one. It barely even looks like a cut. Reset the dial and go to a number one. The more space you have here, the further it holds this out, the less the depth of the cut is. The further this is um, up to here, the less this gap is, the deeper the cut is, the deeper it's gonna allow this to cut into the key. So this one, you're barely going to notice it. Okay. Trying to show the camera and having everything backwards proving to be difficult. All right, number one. That's what a one's gonna look like. Very teeny tiny. Very teeny tiny. Okay. It's a time consuming process, so charge accordingly. Okay. This video is almost 20 minutes long. Obviously, you can do it a whole lot faster when you're not trying to explain what the heck you're trying to do. But just bear in mind that it is a time-consuming process. All right. So our next cut is going to be a five. Reset the dial. Come back to number five. Bingo. Hey, last cut. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. Hey. Grindy, grindy, grindy. Use all of your senses. Feel it cutting. Look at it cutting. Watch it cutting. <coughs> Hear it cutting. Okay? Notice the sound of the cutting that it's making. Notice the sound when it's not cutting anymore. Feel the difference in pressure and the difference in the grit when you're grinding it. Keep all of these senses all while you're watching, listening, hearing, feeling, and then you're going to know what's going on with the, with the machine as you're trying to use it. It's a complicated machine to use. Make sure that you're paying attention to it. I mean, it's not that complicated, but if it's the first time, I know the first time I used it, it was a pain to, to, to try and cut my first key. You know, that's why I'm making this video to try and help you guys out. So just keep that in mind that you need to charge accordingly. Okay, so there's the last one. Ting, 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 ting. Okay, come on camera. Cut, 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 all the way around. 
Now here's going to be the moment of truth. We'll use that. Perfect. Okay. Cut. 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 Oh, it's in the pick position. So there's something else to note. See how it's in the pick position, how that's not lined up with that? This is actually really important, and this can get you pretty messed up, especially if you reset your pick. You can't stick the key in here. See how the see how the two notches are not aligned? One's over here, one's back over here. That's a major problem. That needs to be lined back up over there. So that's why it's uber important to make sure you don't mess up your pick. Because the pick now needs to go back in and reset it. Okay. There. That's how it should look. Voila. Make sure you reset it. That's a very good point to make. If you, because your pick, your pick doesn't have that little nub or that little foot on the edge of it to keep it locked in there so you can't pull the key out at any random position. With your pick, you can. It doesn't have that foot. So make sure that you reset it. And that's why it's always a good idea to tighten that sucker down so you don't lose it. Notice how easy that was. If it didn't work out that way, I'd have to repick the lock again. Get the key we just made. Perfect. Okay. Lock. Locked. Click. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome sauce. Now that you have the code, you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> you have the code written down. You can make more keys. Um, you can give them the code, you can do whatever you want to with it, but, um, that's how you make, that's how you make a tubular key from scratch. That is how you pick the lock with the HPC, um, model B. And that is how you cut a key using the HPC cutter. More information. Check out waynslockshop.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you've done this a million times, it's probably not going to be that interesting. If you haven't seen how to do that before, this may be interesting to you. If you don't, if your key doesn't turn out properly, nine times out of ten, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line the key up with the pick and make sure that you went in the correct direction. The first thing, the biggest mistake people are going to make is go in the opposite direction. They're not going to keep cutting in the same direction. They're going to read it backwards. So try and cut the key backwards. If that doesn't work, then you need to start over. You need to recut. You need to re-read, and then you need to re-write your numbers down. I would suggest just completely starting over. If your pick still works, then the then the uh, depths and the gauges are still good. But if not, then you need to go ahead and uh, redo that. I mean. I'm actually going to pull my little calibration kit out right now, and I'll show you guys where I have mine calibrated to. So that way, if you need to calibrate your machine, you can at least see where I'm starting off at. On. We don't need to get that far down into it. Um, we got one more with the hurdy-gurdy here, which should be a whole lot quicker, only about 10 minutes. But this is another great tool, uh, hurdy-gurdy is a highly sought after tool. If you ever get a chance to buy one or see one come up for sale, buy it immediately. It was made by A1 Tools and Manufacturing. No longer in business, the tool has been discontinued, but still a fantastic, fabulous tool. Some would argue the best tubular key cutting machine ever made.
Wait a minute. Maybe I didn't share this one. Hard to find. Yeah, Facebook image is buggy, unfortunately. So we're going to start in like a like a clockwise type of position here. So you just pick which way you're you're going to go, find the center, and then you use this and you line it up um, with with the. We are set for track. HD. Okay. So there's basically a little nub right there, and there's your little nub, boom, like so. Okay, come on, camera. Okay, so the first one is definitely going to be a one. Well, it's really it's really hard to tell though sometimes. <clears throat> so I'm like a one. And you want to you want to just hold it flat and then slide it over it. If it doesn't slide over it easily without picking it up. Then you're probably on the wrong cut. I would rather undercut it than overcut it. So that looks like it's a two. I'll go with a two. And then if we undercut it and it doesn't work, we can always go back and we can come back. So I'm gonna write two or three because it's it's a little difficult to shove onto the three, but there's also just a tiny little bit of space above the two. <clears throat> I'm gonna run into the same thing on this one. Hardest part is decoding. The... So I have a question. If you could do a half cut. Uh, where is my hurdy-gurdy? I just have that thing. Oh. Uh... So the way the hurdy-gurdy works. <clears throat> let's see here. Come back to this. So the way the hurdy-gurdy works is it spaces. It gets spaced out on a screw. This is like a screw here. And you basically thread this in and then lock the locking portion down on the cut. So you can see here, we can line the arrow up on a four. And if we line the arrow up on a four, we tighten this down and it goes into one of these little pockets. So technically, I could go to four and a half and lock it down there and the space would be the same. So yes, you could do a half cut if you wanted to. Thing so it's like a six, but if I have one that's really that I just am not sure about, I'll write both while I've got it here so that way I know whether I'm going up or down. Mm -hmm. Nope, so that's the easiest way that I've seen to work the best is you just hold it flat, and if you slide it into it and it goes right in the notch, then it's good. If it doesn't, if you have to kind of lift it, then probably not so much. Four. One, two, six, four. These are cut exactly the same, it looks like. Four. <clears throat> One. Three. All right, so that's what we're gonna cut it. Get it that way. Maybe I did that backwards. I think you're supposed to do it clockwise. But either way, whatever. We'll just read it the other way. <clears throat> All right. So if I put that on there, and one cut, yeah. So we did it. I did it the opposite way. You're supposed to read it <clears throat> clockwise. So. This one is actually three, one, four, four, six, two, one. Okay, so just so you guys can see, clockwise is the way you want to read that. <clears throat> Which is fine with me because we'll just, it's, it's written down and it's got it there. So, all right. So for this, you're going to take the blank and you're going to put the palm protector on. Okay. Then you're going to put the point on the cut that you're trying to cut. So, for example, we are cutting a number one cut. The point is pointing towards the number one. Okay. 
Bink. Right there. Then you take the arrow and you point the arrow towards the cut you want it to make. So I need to make a number three cut. The numbers are on the side here. I'm going to point the arrow to the number three, get this little red screw into the hole. You can see there's indentations. So the red screw, point the arrow towards the number, step one. Step two, find where that screw is gonna go down into that little slot to hold it there and hold it there. Then you're gonna use your palm protector, push the key blank in and then turn, okay? Very, very easy. I think it's kind of easier just to grab that and turn it back and forth <clears throat> and then really give it a couple goes. So you'll feel it grab, you'll feel it grab and then you'll feel it start to cut and you'll feel the sh shavings and then you want to cut until it's just completely cut until you cannot feel that anymore. So three, then we're going to do a one. I'm going to point this towards the one, I think. Point it towards the one. Screw that sucker down. That's my favorite way to do it. It's just to kind of grab that, but you have the handle if you need it. Okay, until it's nice and clear. We're gonna do a four. Number three cut. Number four depth. Mm -hmm. Now that one cuts quite a bit. Okay. And it just so happens our next one is a number four. So number four position, number four cut. So we don't need to change anything except for the position of the key blank. Nice and clean cut. And we're gonna do number six for the number five position. Change the key blank to the number five position. Change this to the number six. Number six, just like so. When I first got this thing, or when I was first playing around with it, I thought the red <clears throat> screw indicator was what uh, was the, where you put it, but no, it's the arrow. Bink. So if you go to number six, that needs to point to number six, and the screw, the little screw dial, uh, is actually not on an actual number. Okay. Deep cut, so back and forth, light pressure, and then really get into it. And voila. Okay. Uh, six, two. So position number six is going to be a two cut. <clears throat> Aim it at the number two. Two. Okay. tell this thing's had some wear. This thing has cut some keys. It probably was in a vise, I guess. It'd be a lot easier if you mounted it in a vise, actually. <clears throat> okay, and the last one will be the number seven position and a number one cut. Super easy, not much material to cut out there. Round it around, voila. Alrighty. Now, I'm gonna go back around and check it. Number three, beautiful. Number one, awesome. Number four, right on point. Number four, right on point. Number six, 
The big cat right on point. And then our number one, yet again, is right on point. So, lock the real test. Oh, look at that. Bink, 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 bink. Perfect. So, that's how you use the HP, or I'm sorry, the uh, A1 uh, Hurdy Gurdy, the legendary. Uh, I found this to be. Um, a lot more comfortable and uh, seem to cut very well, has, gives you more leverage. Um, and I just don't see how you could destroy this thing set short of uh, intentionally abusing it. Other than that, um, it'll probably last my lifetime and maybe somebody else's. So check out A1 Security, check out the Hurdy Gurdy. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any questions, I can answer them for you. Um, Wanted to have some new content today, but uh, I had my clear acrylic tubular lock and couldn't locate that. So somebody's taken off with it and uh, I'll get back to it and we'll have some more up close HD video covering the tubular locks and how they work. I also have a tubular lock kit so we can actually repin it and service it and do everything with it. But the basics are here. Anytime you run into a tubular lock out in the field, should be able to make a key for it using either of those tools. Electronic key machines have the option to cut tubular locks as well, and perhaps we'll cut one out on the Triton key machine as well. So for more information, check out wayneslockshop.com. We're still running that lifetime special. If anybody's interested in that, $285 buys you a lifetime of education. Other than that, have a great day. This will get archived over in Wayne's Lock Shop. See you later, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. If you think of questions later, hit me up on social media or shoot me an email. Thank you.